This week on NBA 2K TV, the NBA 2K League is back. Scott Cole joins us to break down the new season. Plus, Scott O'Gallagher is back with more winning tips. And we're headed to my team for tips and top plays. Welcome to a brand new episode of NBA 2K TV. We have so much in store for you this week, including some exciting news. That's right, the NBA 2K League Season 3 has kicked off, and we caught up with the man behind the mic. The New Orleans Riverfront gleaming brightly along the Mississippi here tonight. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us for NBA action on 2K Sports. Our broadcast team tonight on one side. And let's check out a breakdown. Looking at some stats for him. And the stat to look. And David Aldridge is standing by for our pregame report. David, good evening. Well, some say Giroux Holiday is the best defender in the league that no one told. What a great attitude. He is a monster on defense. David, thank you. Fantastic backcourt facing off tonight in this one, Smitty. I want to ask you, do you think this is a guard-centric league right now? Kevin, it is. And no matter how tall you are and what position, pretty much 90% of the guys now can dribble, they can pass, they can shoot. We have guys that are seven-footers that we're calling guards. That's why I think right now this is a guard-oriented lead. Let's check out Toronto's starting lineup. Ananobi and Siakam in at the forward slots. Ari out there with Fred Van Vliet. And it's Ibaka in at the center position. And for New Orleans, Holiday and Ingram out on the perimeter. Zion is the four with Favors at the five. And it's Ball in at the one spot. And they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. And the Raptors with the ball. Lowry with the ball. This one for three. It's rebounded by Derek Favors. So Favors will bring it up for the Pelican. Outside Holiday. Passes it the ball. Back to Holiday. Shot clock at six. Fires for three. That shot off. Now Toronto takes it the other way. They put up a nice win against Utah last time out. In that one, they owned the backboards. Most of the second chance opportunities went to them. They were able to convert a lot of those offensive rebounds. That's the key. Generate points off those extra possessions. The Pelicans, they are committed to New Orleans. Some have speculated they'd be a candidate to move to the Seattle market. Organization-wise, they have said they're not going anywhere. First free throw is good. And when the new GM took over basketball operations, he said ownership's commitment was a big factor. They have said all the right things. Sometimes teams in the South can struggle with attendance. The Pelicans have made it clear they want to win right here in New Orleans. And that one goes in, too, from the line that time. I'll tell you, he doesn't give points away. Excellent job from the line. quarter to play with about a minute and a half gone. 
Here's Williamson. And that one rolling around and rims out. Outside Lowry. It's rebounded by New Orleans. Unusual for him, just a lack of concentration. Fails to finish the play. Four shots, four misses, and you can sense a certain frustration building. Great pass to set up the lay-in. What a move by Lowry. He can create shots with his handles. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. The putback, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. And, and folks, he did not luck into that one. He knew just where he wanted to be to grab that backboard. Here in the first, just under two and a half minutes played so far. And that one's good. His second basket of four, shooting 50%. Unafraid to challenge you inside. Lowry's a scoring threat on all three levels. Ball, the pass to Holiday. And here in the first, uh, about three minutes in. Lowry against Ball. Over Lowry. Ball with the bucket. And this is Alvin Gentry's fourth stop as an NBA head coach. He's been working as an NBA assistant. Let's get this, since 1988. Over three decades in this league. A decade coaching in college. Worked for and with so many legendary coaches. He's seen it all. Nice again. It's deflected. Outside Lowry. And we're just over three and a half minutes into the first quarter. Siakam against Ball. Siakam passes to Ananobi. Over Williamson. Ananobi, good. And it's crucial that Ananobi knocks down that jumper, showing how skilled he is from the perimeter. And first time out of the game called for New Orleans. Defensively, Smitty, why do we see more full court press in college than we do in the NBA? You know, the guards are better at the NBA level. And I think also your five man who usually a guy who can't. The NBA 2K League season has begun. Scott Cole, we are in the midst of yet another competitive 2K season. What's the vibe out there? Well, I, you know, I think it's super exciting. You know, Dirk and I back on the mic again. We're seeing a lot of exciting new rookies every Tuesday through Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern time till about midnight. We're going to be bringing like 20, 25 hours worth of NBA 2K League content each and every week. You got to tune in because there's a lot of bright stars and, of course, a lot of familiar faces as we get these regular season games in. Speaking of familiar faces, one thing that I really love John on the sideline. David? Well, the Nuggets, lucky to have you. Thanks, David. 
We get a break in the action, so let's take a look at the West and how the teams are stacking up. Taking a look at Denver. Right now, they're locked into third place in the conference, looking to get a high seed for the playoffs. You know, for the Nuggets, they had a few critics coming into the season, and now I don't think they have any. This is a club ready to not only make a deep run, but possibly win it all. You know, that's the mindset you have to have. They know if they can get to the playoffs, they have the talent to do some real damage. Now the starting group for the Denver Nuggets. The backcourt is Murray and Harris. Millsap and Jokic, the big men. And it's Barton in its small forward. And for Detroit, at the forward positions, Snell and Griffin. Rose is out there with Kennard. And it's Wood in at the five spot. This end of the season awards already being debated. What did it mean to you when you were named All-NBA? Well, it, it meant a lot, especially in my era, again, of playing against the best power forwards I feel in, in, in all time. And so, so it meant a lot. It's only one power forward position. And so to be uh, on that All-NBA team, uh, it, it's something that's more special uh, to me than being an All-Star because it's not about being uh, the best 12 or 24. It's about being the best five in the league. And so uh, those those moments were always special being the first team in and, and, and like you said, you played in the golden era of the best players ever to play that position. I, I tell you what, I think I played in the era where anyone that you would have picked in the power four from the Western Conference, uh, I couldn't have been upset at uh, over myself because everyone uh, played in such a dominating fashion. Their teams were winning, and I knew personally how hard it was to guard these guys one-on-one. -on -one. And guys, one thing that has been interesting to see since Blake Griffin came to Detroit is how he's developed as a leader, has come into his own with how he takes responsibility for the team's play. First free throw is good. And with Griffin, you look at his time on the Clippers, and for most of his career, he was more of a second in command. Coach Casey said last year, early on, that Griffin is the leader of this team, and Blake took it upon himself to step up to the challenge. Makes sense no matter how you look at it. He's their best player and needs to be one of the leaders. Oh, well, Kev, you know I always appreciate when a big man can create for others. Blake Griffin, he's one of the best in the game in that regard. Such a fantastic pass. Here's Rose, following the score by Jamal Murray. Rose in the post. A good portion of the scoring has come from him. He averages more than 18 points a game. Just five to shoot. This is it to Snell. Takes the three. No good that time. And it's Denver the other way. Chris, you almost forget just how big Griffin is because of how smoothly he can facilitate for others. Yeah, Kevin, and I hate when people say he's a good passer for a big man. I mean, what type of caveat is that? He's just a good passer. He has great vision, superb timing, and that's why he's always been near the top in assists for bigs. And here's Rose. After Gary Harris made that last three-point count it, good. Rose has got his second bucket. And as long as he retains that great explosion in his legs, Derrick Rose will be a factor around the rim. Outside Millsap. Pass to Jokic. Murray with it. From deep three-point range, Jokic. Jokic on the follow. This is as good as it gets for first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. Pistons trailed by seven. Now Rose. The pass to Wood. He's looking for Griffin and finds him. Over Millsap. That shot missing. Now the Nuggets take it the other way. They come into this one following the loss to the Mavericks. Murray finds Jokic. Good, and the assist goes to Murray. Boy, he is looking confident. Love how they're using him so far. Yeah, that's because he's getting his number called early. I mean, he's doing his part to help carry the offensive. Now here's Rose. Tries from seven. The shot will not fall. Good defense by Jokic. And Murray's got the ball here for the Nuggets. Here's Harris. Here's Jokic. And Jokic throws it down. 
excellent all-around performance so far, hence the big lead. Yeah, Greg, they've come out of the gate strong at both ends of the floor, just, just in total control so far. Now, here's Rose. And he banks in the way. about things is there a moment that stands out for you as your favorite call well i mean it was probably t wolves gaming uh last year you know they were an expansion team it looked like they were going nowhere as expansion teams go through the ups and downs of starting their first season and next thing you know they started on a winning streak they're into the playoffs they roll through the playoffs they win the whole thing so and all of a sudden you know bear the beast is a household name uh, when it comes around the league, when you see these faces on ESPN and Twitch and YouTube and all over these places, uh, that people are following the league. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the WNBA on 2K Sports. And on tap tonight, it's the Indiana Fever going up against the New York Liberty. From the 2K booth with Brian Banifatemi and Tim Swartz, I'm Blake Suniga. Thanks for coming along. And you think about the rich history of the WNBA. Can you guys believe 2020 will be the league's 24th season? Yeah, crazy, isn't it? I'd immediately think of the now defunct Houston Comets winning the first four WNBA championships. And only the Minnesota Lynx, as of 2019, have as many titles, winning in 2011, 2013, 2015, and 2017. Although, well, those are some great teams, Tim, but don't forget about the great players like Diana Taurasi, the W. WNBA's all-time leading scorer. Now here's Durr. Pass to Charles. Nurse. Shot clock at five. From about ten feet out. And she gets it to go. You don't see a ton of shots from this area anymore. However, Nurse does work on her mid-range game. First quarter, just over a minute played. To the paint. Here's Dupree. He can't hit that time. So New York will take it the other way. And she drops it in from the low post. One of the advantages for Nurse, she's six feet, so tall for a point, allows her to get a clear view of the whole court. Now here's Wheeler. Here's Mitchell. Up and in on the layup. You can always depend on her to put that lead pass right on the money. Here's New York now. Outside Boyd. It's Kia Nurse on the wing. And there's the defensive three-second call. Tough times for the Fever as they've been at the bottom of the league struggling on offense and defense, really just uh, overmatched in every facet of the game. Find the lanes. One shot. And she shows the focus there, nails the technical. And for the Fever, never seems like they can catch a break at times. Even off the floor, Blake, as they missed out on the top pick of 2019 in the lottery, despite winning only six games. I know it's going to take more than just one player to turn the team around, but 
being at the bottom of the league in offensive and defensive ratings goes beyond a single change. Now here's Dupree. Over Charles. And the basket by Dupree. A spark on offense. Dupree's love for the game is what pushes her to be the player we see today. Pass to Durr. Outside Charles. Now here's Nurse. Defense right on her. To the inside. Durr. That one, no good. Natalia Chanwa playing some nice defense. Left side, Wheeler. Mitchell defended by Nurse. Outside, Wheeler. Fires it. Oh, and she misses the go-ahead basket. Nurse outside. Kia Nurse has doubled. And a foul on the shot. She'll go to the stripe for two. It's on Kelsey Mitchell. Liberty uh, having some issues as a team recently. Finishing near the bottom of the league. And clearly they just can't seem to build around the uh, all-world player, Tina Charles. Shoot two. The first free throw is good. And for the Liberty, the turnovers and play of the supporting cast just hasn't been there. Man, I feel that in our broadcast so many times. You know, the, the performance of our supporting cast a lot of times isn't there. But uh, overall, this team is just sloppy at times when they can't afford to be. Too many turnovers, and they don't really get to the line and earn easy baskets. Well, the New York Liberty, a marquee franchise in the WNBA. One of the chartered teams in the league, but unfortunately, they're still looking for their first title. Now, here's Mitchell. Laney outside. Pass to Dupree. From the top of the key, off the left rim and out. And with the Liberty, as you said, that first championship something they are searching for. New York has come close several times and played in four WNBA finals. And this team is desperate for a banner, but it just hasn't been in the cards for them. And Brian, when we talk about a player being crafty or doing the little things that make a difference, what are some examples of that? Well, above all else, Blake, I think it's doing stuff that ticks off your opponent within... story for life what's the word on the street from some of the pro players that you've talked to in terms of preparation for this week with the nba 2k league build it's a special build that you guys would take to interactive build for the league so you're gonna see some crazy point guard play you know we have had a lot of scrimmages leading up to this and the number one pick jbm i mean He's scoring 40, 50 points a game as a rookie. So if you want to see some high-level point guard play, and if you're on the other side and you love mashing, you're... Up next, the Spurs. Welcome, everyone, to Noche Enabia. Olet, D.A. Jacob. Well, guys, DeMar DeRozan is a prolific. Great vision, David. Thank you. 
Now we have a moment to look at how the blocks have been stacking up over the past several months for Aldridge. But we're just not seeing that same fierceness out of him defensively these last few months. He's lost a little bit of that intimidation factor. He's not blocking as many shots, and he's not making the same impact on that end of the floor. So here's Oklahoma City's starting group. Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. Gilgis Alexander out there with Chris Paul. And it's Dort in at the small forward. And for San Antonio, we've got Lyles. Also, LaMarcus Aldridge out. DeRozan out there with Murray. And it's Forbes in at the two guard. And Adams has got the ball here for Oklahoma City. And the Spurs, I've heard it said, the most process-oriented team in the league. Well, that's an understanding of what it takes for them as a small market team to be successful. A good assessment of what they have to do as the San Antonio Spurs to be good. Scouting, coaching, chemistry, all part of that. And growing up about 15 miles south of the Staples Center, DeMar DeRozan idolized Kobe Bryant-Clark and patterned his game after him. And you can see evidence of Kobe's game in DeMarcus's game. You think about the footwork, the ability to post up, the moves and counter moves, two. the balance and strength. I think he owes a lot of that to the Mamba. That free throw, no good. Conference rivals in this one, Clark. Does that matter as much as people think, or is it just another game? I, th I still think it matters to the players. I mean, they're a little less emotional now, rivalries. They're not as heated, a little more practical. I think it's mostly about making the playoffs and, and where you're seated. And he sinks the second. And for the Thunder, one of the assistant coaches leaving this past summer. Greg, how much of a concern is that for head coach Billy Donovan? Possibly a sign that Donovan could be on the hot seat in OKC. I mean, three consecutive first-round exits. Donovan on the final year of his deal. The clock is definitely ticking. And the Spurs with possession following the shot by Chris Paul. And the basket by DeRozan. Boy, DeRozan comfortable and confident from that area. For Oklahoma City, their last game was a loss to Utah. Alinari outside. Stolen. DeRozan scanning the floor. Passes it to Lyles. He dishes it to Forbes. Murray against Paul. Murray, the pass to DeRozan. Four on the shot clock. And he hits it just before the shot clock expires. DeRozan's got five. DeRozan showing no panic whatsoever. Shot clock almost down, but nothing but cool head and composure from him. And so Oklahoma City again turning it over. Searching for their first points of the game. For San Antonio, they've gone two or three here to start out the game. We're just about two minutes into the first quarter. That one misses. And the Thunder going the other way now. Dort passes to Gilgis Alexander. Kicks it out to Paul. Takes the three. It's hauled in by Lyle. Boy, they are frigid right now. I mean, failing to connect on their first four attempts. Here in the first, just under two and a half minutes played so far. No good on the three. Last game for the Spurs. They pick up the W against Dallas. And Gallinari throws it down. And when you're open, Paul will find you in a nanosecond. I mean, that's one thing that makes him really special. Outside DeRozan. The shot is good. And so is his shooting tonight. Three for four. Thunder trailing by five. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. And Adams kicks to Gilgis Alexander with some arc, and he lays it up and in. Boy, that was a sweet-looking teardrop. There's very little defense for that. The pass to Aldridge. 
Murray surveying the D. And Adams sends it back. And they'll keep possession. A second chance effort. That one a little long. Boy, he's got to be kicking himself for failing to make that shot. That's money. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Nice work to get it inside and draw the contact. Exactly. The defense determined. 